We found it, Millie. We found it. Are you sure that's it? Just look at it, Millie. It's the lost treasure of the pirate captain, Hollis Bibble. I can't believe he just left it out here in the open like this. Why didn't he bury it? Why would he bury it? It's not like pirates carried shovels in their boats. I never thought of it that way. We're going to be famous the world over for this. Wherever people talk about pirates or treasure or adventure, they're going to mention the name West Virginia Jones. And Millie. Oh, yes, yes, and Millie. Well, this is it. Inside this box is one of the greatest treasures on earth. Men have searched for this treasure for years, and now you and I will be able to first to see it since Hollis Bibble put it here. You look first because you're the leader. No, Millie, ladies first. Behold the treasure. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Very funny. What's so funny? Well, there's no real treasure there. There's nothing but clown stuff. Look. What? Where's the gold? Where are the diamonds? Where are the rubies? Well... There's a clown wig, and there's a clown costume, and I think this is a tin for cream pie. Oh no, Millie, this isn't the treasure of Captain Hollis Bibble, this is the treasure of Dribble Dibble. Dribble Dibble? The king of clowns, what a fool I was. Take it easy, Jones. It's not easy to admit when you've pursued the wrong treasure. The important thing is that you get back on the right track and set out in pursuit of the real treasure. You're right, Millie. We're not the first people to find fool's gold, but we will find the real thing. Come on, let's keep searching. All right, in the 1800s, the territory of the United States slowly moved westward. Through wars and through purchases from other countries, the U.S. government expanded its size from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. While the nation grew in size geographically, most of the nations stayed in the east, preferring the comfort of established towns and cities to the wild, untamed west. But then something happened. People in the east learned that there was gold out west. Suddenly people found the courage to travel the hostile, un unmapped terrain and settle in new places. Towns like Deadwood, South Dakota sprang up all over the west where fortune hunters and prospectors sought gold in the hills. Searching for gold turned out to be a lot harder than those gold-loving dreamers anticipated, though. Not only did you have to deal with wild animals, hostile Native American tribes who didn't like the intruders, and desperados who had robbed you blind, you had to know the difference between real gold and fool's gold. Fool's gold, which we have right here, a couple examples, looks a lot like real gold. See how shiny it is? There's some little flakes that are in there. So that, that's fool's gold, called pyrite, okay? It's kind of hard to tell the difference. It's practically worthless, though. That's the problem. Many prospectors worked their fingers to the bone digging up what they thought were gold, only to find out that all his labor had been in vain. He didn't find gold. He found nothing. When it comes to seeking treasure in our time, Jesus showed us that, we, that what the world considers to be the gold standards, it is anything but that. The world wants us to believe that gold means being number one, but God's definition of treasure is something very different. We're going to read Luke 22, 19 through 27. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. Also, a dispute among them arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater? The one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as one who serves? There are two stories about Jesus in this passage, and very often we separate these stories into two different messages. That's a shame because these two moments from the night when Jesus was betrayed and arrested tell us about Jesus and what Jesus treasures most. Jesus begins by breaking bread and passing a cup of wine, what we call the Lord's Supper. The bread represents Christ's body, and the wine represents his blood. Jesus tells his disciples to celebrate this supper in memory of him any time they come together. 
He wants them to remember that he came not to conquer, but to lay down his life for them. But no sooner does Jesus tell the disciples this, they break into an argument over who is going to be the greatest in his kingdom. Jesus had to be so frustrated. Didn't they see what they just did? Or what he had just did? Were they not even were they even listening? To be the greatest in God's kingdom means you must become the least. Like Jesus, we need to put others first. True treasure seekers are people who seek to be the servant of all. Anything else is just fool's gold. The message of Jesus in this passage is the exact opposite of the world we live in. Our world is all about getting ahead, looking out for number one, and stepping over others to get what you want. Jesus taught us a different way. He taught us that God is not impressed with the rich, the powerful, and the famous. Being first in God's eyes means that you put yourself last. You look for little and big ways to help people out, and you always put others first. A few years ago, Spider-Man creator Stan Lee had a TV show. He was looking for a new superhero for comic books, and he had men and women competing as heroes they, they had made up. During one challenge, Lee told the would-be heroes they had to search for a hidden object and then race to a finish line. He didn't tell them what they would, that they would pass by a crying little girl who was pretending to be lost. Stan Lee was looking for real heroes, willing to put others ahead of themselves. And the people who won the challenge were the ones who stopped racing and helped the little girl. Jesus didn't just teach us to put others first. He lived it. The bread and the wine we use to celebrate the Lord's Supper remind us over and over just how far Jesus was willing to go to save us. Fool's gold looks pretty good to the human eye. When we see glamorous celebrities with big houses, expensive clothes and jewelry, and fancy cars, we see people who look like they have it all. But the treasures of this world are fool's gold next to the treasures of heaven. Real treasure can only be found when we humble ourselves like Jesus. Don't chase after fool's gold. Be a servant and store up treasure in heaven. Okay, guys, your assignment for this week is to answer these uh, five questions from the scripture we read. The first question is, Jesus broke the bread and said, this is my what? Jesus broke the bread and said, this is my what? The second question is, Jesus took the cup and said, this is my blank poured out for you. He took the cup and said, this is my blank poured out for you. The third question is, the disciples were arguing about who would be the what? They were arguing about who would be the what? Jesus said, whoever wanted to be the greatest must be the blank of all. Jesus said, whoever wanted to be the greatest must be the blank of all. And the last question is, blank showed us how to put others first when he went to the cross and died for us. Blank went to, or showed us how to put others first when he went to the cross and died for us. So if you answer those questions, you can either message me on Facebook, you can email me, or you can uh, mail your answers in the U.S. mail to the church. And if you do that, I will send you a treat in the mail. Who doesn't like to get mail, right? Bonus points if you send it by Pony Express or Telegraph. I will list the email address and uh, the church physical address in the comments section of the video post. Thanks. Bye.